All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Astrogator mod, which is being made by forum user Hibaru-san. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is an interesting new navigational aid, which I've been having a whole lot of fun with so far. Though I probably should mention, of course, that we have looked at multiple different navigational aids in the past on this series, with varying degrees of complexity. Uh, but recently, this one really grabbed my attention because of its simplistic and streamlined nature, which I really quite enjoy. It's, it's just there and it works. And that's a convenient thing when you are trying to do a mission. Now, how you actually get to the Astrogator menu, whether you're in a mission in the map view or even here in the Kerbal Space Center view, we have this fun new button for Astrogator, and we can open it up here, which I find kind of, um, well, pointless. It's not like we can transfer the entire planet someplace, but it's a good place for us to look at the settings before we actually go out into the uh, actual space view to see it work in action. Now, the different settings that we have here are pretty simplistic, not a whole lot of choices, but the first one here in the main settings is to generate plane change with your burns so that it will automatically adjust the plane of your transfer, which is convenient. You can turn that off if you just want flat transfers but of course i mean come on you're gonna need plane changes for most of the planets you're wanting to get to so it's just good to leave that on and of course it is on by default now we also have the include plane change burns in our delta v display so on our nav ball when we are getting close to the node it will show that information there now that is off by default and I don't know entirely why, but personally, from my experience with this mod so far, honestly, it never really seems to add anything new to the Delta V display. So I think that might potentially be something that's still being worked on, because at least with my time with this mod, I haven't yet to see this thing do anything different with this option on. So personally... It's defaulted off, so I'll leave it off. Now, deleting existing maneuvers is a good little button here. That's uh, a fun one to remember. Now, up here is where you'll actually select which body in the, the cosmos you want to go to. And if you don't want to go to it anymore, you have to click this delete existing maneuvers button then click the maneuver node and it will delete it from the game. And then you'll need to go back and turn this off because, well, you just don't want to keep deleting maneuver nodes. That'd be a bit awkward. Now, the next one is calculate transfers to any tracked asteroids. This is defaulted on, which is quite handy. So if you have found any asteroids in your tracking station, it will also calculate it to them. Now, it'll calculate it in a very similar way to how it does uh, ships. We'll talk about that more when we actually get out into space but it's a cool feature defaulted as on now for the maneuver node creation we got a couple of things here again these are all the stuff that is left on by default so we have automatic target of destination so when you do click the maneuver node it's going to automatically target say moho then the next option is it'll automatically shift the camera focus to moho and then finally, it'll automatically edit the ejection node so that you don't have to worry about doing that yourself. And defaulted off is to automatically edit the plane change node. Uh, and again, you can turn that on or off and you can only have either the ejection node or plane change node on. And that's just for your purpose, whichever you're trying to do, you'll go with that. And then the final one is adjust nodes with translation controls when RCS is off. So you can manually adjust these things, which is always a good thing to have. Now down in the last two settings is your unit. So you can try and, uh, you know, select either metric, which is the way to go, or you could be weird and go with the American system. I say this as an American scientist, I prefer metric. So let's just go with that. Now, if we close the settings and close this and actually go to the tracking station, we can take a look at my Astrogator ship here that I built earlier for demonstration and head out to space and, you know, show off how this all works. Now with SAS on, let's uh, align on prograde there and open up our Astrogator menu. Now you can see it remembered the last place I had it, which is quite convenient. So if we move it over here, shut it off, put it back on again, it'll stay wherever you last put it. 
which is always a convenient thing because, well, yeah, it's it's just a nice feature. Now, if we do turn off the UI, it does go with everything else. There are some mods that don't do that, so it is nice and convenient to have that feature. And uh, yeah, let's actually just mess around with some maneuver nodes. Now you'll see that we have a selection of different celestial bodies we can go to. And basically this list is everything that we can possibly get to. So it's not everything in the universe, but it's what this particular ship can actually make it to, which is quite nice. So it's not gonna include all the other individual moons and so forth. So uh, if you did want to get to a moon of another planet, you're gonna have to go to the planet first, then when you're in that sphere of influence, you'll have to go to the moon, which is a little bit awkward, but overall it's, you know, pretty simplistic. You just gotta go to where you need to be and then maybe do another transfer, which isn't too hard. Now we do have up at the top here, we have where you're going to be transferring to and we can sort that by alphabetically, whichever way you please. Time till burn, so it will show you if you did want to get there, how soon you could be there, and you can organize that again right there, which is quite convenient. And then the amount of delta V that is required, and again, we can sort that to your heart's content. Now me, I just like doing it on the transfer one, cause well, it's, it's easy. Now let's actually go to the map view, that's not map view, that is time warp, there we go, there's the right hotkey. And say if we did want to go to the moon, now, we could uh, start our burn in about 43 minutes, and it's going to require a, man, a decent amount of Delta V there. So, if we did want to head there, all we'd have to do is hit this little maneuver node button. Click that, and bam, it automatically creates the maneuver nodes to take us to the moon in the shortest time possible with the least Delta V. Seems to be how it tends to calculate these things. And uh, if we did so desire, then we could hit this fast forward button and it will fast forward us to our burn point, which is quite a convenient little feature. And nice for if you have a long mission and, you know, especially for... Now I'll say that one, an hour away, we could just fast forward right to it and be at our transfer window for ELO. Now say for instance, if we didn't want to go to the moon, we wanted to go to Minmus. Now remember that delete function I mentioned earlier, what we're going to have to do is open up settings, click the delete existing maneuver node, delete the one going to the moon, and then turn that off again so that we don't keep deleting things that, well, frankly, aren't there. And that is how you delete those different maneuver nodes. So quite a convenient, easy way to go about things, but you'll notice it still kept that moon as the target, but it has focused our view back on us, which is quite convenient, so we're not still stuck on the moon over there. Now, but what about if you want to target other things, for instance, like I said in here, we do have the ability to calculate uh, the maneuver node to hit a transfer for a tracked asteroid, but not just asteroids. You can also rendezvous with ships just like them. What you're going to have to do, whether it is an asteroid or say this ion powered space probe I have in orbit, you have to target it first and notice it's been added to our Astrogator list, which is very cool there. So it's now on the list. It doesn't include it by default because of course, you could potentially have dozens if not hundreds of ships out in space. So it'll only include whatever ship you actually target. And then when you hit the maneuver node there, it will set for the closest rendezvous. As you can see right there, we'll be pretty close to one another. And I think personally, that's my favorite feature. Yeah, I mean, I can generally get to a planet myself. It'll take me a while of fiddling around with maneuver nodes because I'm just awful at creating maneuver nodes. But my worst thing in navigation in this game is rendezvous with ships. So I love this feature. Now again, it's not actually gonna pilot it for me, it's just setting up the navigation node. So then, you know, I would have to actually change our SAS to target and fly it myself when we actually get to the burn point. But other than that, you know, you're pretty much good to go. You can actually fly your ship, and actually I went with, uh, should have gone with maneuver node, shouldn't I? There we go, that's actually the correct way to go about things, rather than facing towards my ion probe. <laughs> that definitely wouldn't have got us where we need to be. But yes, it's just a convenient way of 
getting to your other ships, or of course your other celestial bodies in the cosmos, which is quite cool. So let's actually delete that node again, because, well, we don't need it anymore. We'll do that. Perfect. And let's set, just again, just to see it in action, we'll set for... Elo, there we are. <laughs> Boy, did I actually target the sun? It did. It focused on the sun, which is awkward. That's not Elo. <laughs> hmm. But it has actually gotten the maneuver node, as you can see. So we will actually be getting near Elo, which is quite handy. Why it focused on the sun? I'm unsure. That's the first time that's happened to me. It might be because it's ELO and it's so far out, perhaps, question mark? Because so far, every planet I've tried, it's focused on that planet. And that's the first time I've actually tried to target ELO. So that is definitely, definitely an interesting thing. And you'll also notice we're actually getting kind of an awkward closest approach on this thing. So again, it's not a perfect system, but... It's simplistic, it's streamlined, and it'll help you get a lot closer in a lot shorter amount of time than, say, I would do. So all you need to do is just fine-tune this a little bit, and then you'd be good to go, which is quite handy. Now, of course, as I said, we do also just occasionally need to fast-forward to things, so if we did hit that to fast-forward to our ELO node, which, holy crap, is in 262 days, zero hours, and I think we may not fast forward because that's going to be a very exceedingly long time. Wow. But hey, that's what it calculated. Okay, we're going to actually just uh, <laughs> undo that warp, which you do have to do manually here, uh, which eh, I'd like if you could press this again to stop it. I think that'd be quite convenient. And yeah, we'll just um, forget that ELO one ever existed. There we go. That's that's just gone now. Perfect, perfect. And yeah, that is Astro Gator. Not really much more to talk about with that one. Uh, again, it's it's a simplistic, streamlined way of setting up maneuver nodes, which I found quite convenient for most of my travels. I love it for rendezvousing for ships. It's perfect for getting to nearby planets. Apparently, it may not be quite as useful for getting to very far away ones like Elo, but hey, just with hopefully a little bit more work, perhaps it will do the trick. Uh, but that uh, that is pretty much it to show with this one. Not a whole lot to go through. Again, it is a more or less simplistic program, but a fun one nonetheless. So if you would like to check out Astro Gator for yourself, and I definitely would suggest to give it a try, you can take a look at the link in the description as always. And of course, if you would like to help the channel out and support it, there is a Patreon link in the description and also on the end slide of the video. And of course, our lovely new chat in Discord that we have so you can come and join the community and have a little conversation with other members of the Codebos game channel as well as myself uh, but that is gonna be it for today folks I hope you all have enjoyed and of course that you do come back for the next one when hopefully we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod but until that time thank you for watching and as always have a good one <laughs>